fellow Toastmasters, and most honored guests. For far longer than most of you have been alive, I had a deep-seated fear of public speaking. And it all began when I was eight years old in Mrs. Gill's third grade class. She'd given us an assignment to read a book, and then, at the end of the week, to do an oral book report. And now, it was the end of the week. I can still recall her turning me and saying, Don, if you would, please step to the front of the room and give us your report. Uh, yes, Mrs. Gill. As I began my long and arduous trek to the front of the room, my heart was pounding, my chest was tight, and I could barely breathe. And when I reached the front of the room and turned to face my classmates, it happened. My brain froze and I couldn't remember a single thing that I wanted to say. Has that ever happened to you? It's terrifying, isn't it? And as I stood there like a deer in the headlights, my classmates started laughing at me. It was the most painful and embarrassing moment of my young life. After what seemed like an eternity, Mrs. Gill said, Don, you can take your seat. But by then, the seed of a very powerful limiting belief had been planted. And in the coming years, when it happened again and again, that seed took root. I came to believe that there was something wrong with me. I came to believe that I must have a defective brain. Why else would it let me down at such important moments in my life? And as a result of that belief, I made a decision that I was going to avoid situations where I would be called on to speak. After all, it was just too painful. Fast forward to the year 2009. A dear friend of mine was getting married, and he asked me to be the best man at his wedding. I was overjoyed, and before I realized the full implication of my answer, I had already said yes. It was only later that evening that I realized that one of my responsibilities as his best man would be to give a speech, the best man's toast. And with that realization, I started to panic, and my mind took me back to that painful experience in Mrs. Gill's third grade class. My brain had already proven itself to be an unreliable ally, and I didn't think I could count on it to remember all the things that I wanted to say about this incredible man. So I made a decision that I was going to write out my speech, and when it came time, I was going to read it. It's not what I wanted to do, but it's what I believed I had to do if I had any hope of getting through it. When the disc jockey handed me the microphone, I picked up my notes, said a quick prayer, and I started to read. And everything was going just fine until all of a sudden it happened. A gust of wind came along and folded my papers in half. I had to stop, find my place, and start over. And before I was able to complete the best man's toast, it happened three more times. I was so embarrassed. I was humiliated. I wanted to crawl into a hole and die. And after I handed the microphone back to the disc jockey, I walked to a darkened area at the far end of the property because I was I wanted to be alone with my pain and my shame. And with tears pouring down my cheeks, I made a commitment to myself and I said I would never, ever let that happen again. Fellow Toastmasters and guests, sometimes you have to hit rock bottom before the pain of remaining the same is so great that it compels you to face your greatest fear. That night was my rock bottom. And three weeks later, I walked through the doors of Unity Speakers Toastmasters Club and signed up. I was finally ready to face my greatest fear. And shortly after I began my journey in Toastmasters, I made a startling discovery. I didn't have a defective brain after all. All those years, I'd been experiencing the effects of a condition that we learned about in grade school. A condition known as fight or flight. You see, what happens is when a human being is experiencing a high level of anxiety, such as you might experience if you're in the wild facing a hungry lion or on stage facing an audience, is your brain is going to go into survival mode and shut down all brain function not related to your survival. Because when you're running from a lion, you don't need your memory. And that's what we do in Toastmasters. Through practice and repetition, we learn to lower our anxiety level such that fight or flight doesn't kick in. And as we become more confident and more competent, we're able to stand on a stage and remember what it is that we want to say. All those years, 
all that pain, all those missed opportunities, with the mistaken belief that I had a condition that might need treat treatment from a medical professional, when in reality, all the treatment I needed was readily available from he for me here in Toastmasters. And I'm grateful for having received that treatment because as you can see, I'm now doing things that in my wildest dreams I never imagined possible. Fellow Toastmasters and guests, whether or not you have any desire to be a public speaker or not, I can guarantee you there will be times in your life when you're gonna be called on to speak in public. Perhaps it'll be a friend's wedding. Perhaps a friend or family member's funeral perhaps on behalf of a cause that you're passionate about. And the question will be, will you have the confidence to stand up and say, yes, I will do it? Or will you do like I did for so many years and live with the regret of having said no? My encouragement to you is to do what you need to do today so you be prepared to stand up and say, yes, I will do it. Mr. Toastmaster. There you go.